It's income week on Morningstar.co.uk and in the second part of my videos with fund managers on income, I'm asking JP Morgan's Global Core Real Assets Trust Manager, Phil Waller, for his take on the I word. Uh, Phil, thanks for joining me. Um, you. How does your trust create income? And in the context of bonds, you know, what's its performance looking like? Um, so for JP Morgan Global Core Real Assets, which I'll call JARA because uh, it's just ticker and easier, easier to get out. Um, we are investing in a global portfolio of real assets, so real estate, infrastructure and transportation. And importantly when it comes to income is we are focused on the core end of the spectrum, which in our kind of definition is really the real assets that produce the majority of their return from income. Mm. And importantly that income is contracted or often regulated. Um, and so it's quite predictable and forecastable in nature. So to give you an example, if you're looking at renewable energy, which is a, an area of the portfolio, um, the wind farms or the solar farms will produce electricity. They'll then sell that to a counterparty, typically under a pre-agreed contract, and that's generating um, the income, which, uh, which is obviously important to a lot of investors. Um, now, because of that, um, that income uh, is often quite uncorrelated in nature. It's coming from quite a differentiated source. And so actually you typically see the correlation of real assets being quite different uh, to equities and fixed income. Mm. And so actually um, real assets had a, had a pretty robust 2022 thus far. Mm. And actually if you look at Jara's share price through the end of October, we're up around 6%. So pretty robust in what has been a, a difficult market. Mm, okay. And speaking of difficult markets, I mean, we're looking at in a new inflationary world aren't we? I mean, how do, you, how do you feel about that as the manager of a, you know, a real assets trust? Yeah, so typically um, we would actually think that um, core real assets in particular um, tend to benefit from inflation over time mm. because these contracts and these regulated structures that I, I just mentioned often do allow for um, these assets to pass on higher costs and, and generate higher revenues in line with inflation. So typically a lot of these contracts have in place um, for every year there to be a review and, and for a, a markup or a pass on of certain costs to happen. So actually um, an inflationary environment, particularly one that is potentially persistent uh, and also just generally higher inflation on an equilibrium basis um, should actually benefit real assets because of the nature of these contracts uh, and actually the higher revenues that they should be able to generate. Mm. You mentioned transportation as part of the portfolio, uh, so to speak. Um, is that an exciting area of real asset investing at the moment? Or are there more exciting areas? Yeah, I think um, you know, transportation has been one, particularly since the pandemic, has been one benefiting um, from a lot of um, tailwinds as you've had shortages in a lot of markets. But generally, I'd say what was exciting us across the portfolio right now is the assets that are going to play a really, really important role in the energy transition. Okay. Uh, and I would say you know, somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of Jara's portfolio is invested across assets that in some way contribute to this. And I think particularly in the short term, um, what is particularly exciting is assets that um, can help countries and economies um, generate better energy stability and energy security. And so renewables, again, is one of them, allowing people to have more control over their energy supply, mm. um, but also natural gas. Um, and so, for example, um, find areas very interesting such as liquid natural gas carriers that help move natural gas around the world, but also gas storage facilities that are helping countries have higher levels of gas um, to deal with cold winters that may come around. So assets that can contribute to this, I think, are going to be very, very important and exciting um, in the medium and also the long term. And just briefly, are you looking to increase that allocation? From the 30, 40 percent. That, that's, an, that's an allocation that has steadily increased over time and still looks like a strong pipeline, you know, yeah. there going forward. Yeah. Um, finally, how healthy is the office? Um, I wanted to ask you that with, yeah. you know, we've come out of the pandemic. Um, people seem to be spending more time in the office. From a commercial perspective, what, what do real assets look like there? Yeah, so, um, so within JARA, we have roughly 10 percent of our portfolio allocated to office on a global basis, primarily in the US and Asia Pacific. And that's a number that's come down since the start of 2020. Um, really, as, as you say, you know, I think office is um, evolving. The office market is evolving, how we're working is evolving, and office space needs to evolve with that. And you, know, you have seen some challenges, and I think you're probably gonna likely see some challenges in certain assets um, that are less well positioned, both in terms of actual position, um, attractive locations that people wanna work in, but also when people get to work, is it an environment they want to be in? Because now they have the choice as to whether they're in work or at home. Um, and so actually we are seeing a kind of bifurcation of the office market, 
where these less attractive assets are you know, potentially going to have um, a bit more of a struggle, but actually well-positioned assets, assets that are newer, more efficient, um, are attractive places to work, um, are still commanding a premium. Um, but definitely it's a market that is evolving and we are, we are looking at how our allocation as well evolves with that. And in terms of what makes an, a place an attractive um, place to work, does that mean that um, you know, the office sites where there are kind of integrated health and social and food courts um, are more attractive? Is that still part of the premium? In, 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 a, in broad sense, yes. And if you think about last mile um, amenities a lot for, for um, our kind of tenants. So when they get to work, have they got a gym, a sh the showers that they need because they're maybe traveling through different methods. Um, and just generally, you know, as you say, a lot of these amenities are, are in very, very important to people. Um, I and mean also there's a kind of a cultural aspect as well. Okay. And actually I think you know what we've seen with our uh, office assets in the US and Asia Pacific is these are actually markets that are a bit more office orientated than maybe what you've seen in Europe. And so I think we've seen uh, more people come back to the office there just because it's more of a cultural aspect as well. Mm, Phil, thank you so much. For more on income, check out morningstart.co.uk all through this week. Until next time, my thanks to Phil. I've been Ollie Smith for Morningstar. <laughs>